In today's video, we're going to show you what to do when your copper tubing here breaks behind your refrigerator like this one did right here. So this, what you're looking at here is a standard quarter inch copper tubing that you normally see in your kitchens between the kitchen wall and your refrigerator. And what this does is this quarter inch line here supplies your ice maker. This is your water supply that goes into the refrigerator. And a lot of people have these older school type copper tubes. And the, the thing I hate about these is see how they bend, they kink, they get out of round, and they can actually cut off the water supply. And if you move your refrigerator in and out too many times, these can end up actually breaking. So here's what it looks like close up. So there's usually a plastic hose or tube on the back of your refrigerator that plugs into your water inlet port there. And this is how the water gets to your refrigerator here. And so it, that hose will have a nut on the end of it that screws right here onto this threaded component here. And then you can see here close up what it looks like here where the damage occurred and what caused the break here of this copper tube. So just normally if you put it too much compression on these copper tubes here, they'll just bend and twist and break and shear off. Now, of course, there's repairs you can do for this. A lot of people will just go to Home Depot and buy a little kit that kind of looks similar to this end here, and they'll do an inline coupling here. But that takes some amount of skill that a lot of people don't have. You have to be able to cut this tube pretty accurately and to keep it somewhat round so that it won't leak when you put the new parts on here. Okay, so what you're going to see in this video here is we have a disaster on our hands because we're going over to my friend Tina's house who had this happen to her. And if this breaks, you're going to be leaking water all over the place at full pressure because remember, this is connected to your water supply. So the only thing you can do to stop it until the plumbers get there is to turn off the main water supply of your house. And so you, they're left in a predicament there. So that's why you have to get this fixed or come up with a solution to bypass it in order to get your water back on. So what we're going to be doing is installing a whole new ice maker supply line. Now we're bringing over a 20 foot version of this. So this is like steel belt. This is our preferred method of doing things. I don't really like doing these old copper things anymore. It's just too many problems for people. These are much more reliable. So you can see the ice maker supply lines are made out of the same hoses here that we use for the toilets and for the, the sink faucets here. These are all very high quality and this is what you should be using. And I don't know if they just get more brittle with age or what, but watch this. Just a couple of times bending it here. That's all it took, three or four times back and forth. That's all it took to get this to bend and break here. So you can see here how it deforms the copper tubing as well as it just shears it right in half. Okay, so remember the two common remedies are you can get another kit to fix the end here, or you can just simply take out the whole thing all together and bypass it with a steel belted hose. So let's go take care of our kitchen. Okay, so this is the new refrigerator that was just delivered by Home Depot. But when it was delivered, they found a problem here with the copper tubing ice maker line that came out of the wall. So as soon as the contractor saw that, they refused to touch it. They're not allowed to touch it. They don't want to mess with it because they were afraid of it breaking. And sure enough, later on, it did indeed break. And that's a common problem with a lot of these ice maker lines. Okay, so the ice maker line starts at the back wall behind the fridge, which we'll show you in a minute. And it works its way through the wall there behind the stove. And then it ends up underneath the sink right there. Okay, so looking here under the sink here, this is the cold water side, and I like the way they've implemented this here with a dual shutoff valve instead of using a saddle valve, which would be illegal. So a lot of the contractors, when they install your ice maker line from the refrigerator, will illegally use saddle valves, which are a violation of plumbing code. So I like this better. So what happens here is this steel belted hose you see right here, this goes up to the cold water faucet. And then right here is the, so it's a, this double valve has 3 8 inch, outer diameter here and a quarter of an inch diameter here for the ice maker lines. The ice maker lines are always a quarter of an inch. So the line comes down out of the double valve, snakes around the back of the floor of the kitchen cabinet here and it works its way up here into the front of this water filter here. The water gets filtered, it pops back out of the other side of the filter, comes back out and around and hits this T and the T the top of the T here, this part goes up to the top of the sink here where we have this little water filter here, the water dispenser here from the filter. So that's a, a classic combination that many people do here when they implement this type of solution. Now the bottom of this T has a very iffy connection that eventually mates to a copper tube right there. And you can tell they've had problems with it in the past. So you can see there were multiple layers of black and white tape have been wrapped around it there. 
in an attempt to stop prior leaks. So we're going to be bypassing all of this anyway. So what happens is this ends up back in the wall there and as we showed you before it goes around through the drywall and pops back out by the refrigerator. And here's where it pops out here behind the refrigerator. So here's the end of the copper tube that comes out of the floor there. So you can see why it it may have contributed to it kinking and getting broken was they came here and added shoe molding here at some point in the past when they did wood floors here and that probably likely aided in pinching this copper tubing here so it, it actually broke so it snapped and came right out of the point where it comes out of the wall there not good so there's the end of it where it kinked see how it pinched in and then snapped off because this type of tubing is just very weak and then over the years I think it just gets weak and if you're not careful with this stuff, you know, this is why, in my opinion, this, uh, this should not be allowed. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is running a new ice maker line like this, steel belted. And this is the best way to do it, really. You don't have to worry about it. These things are very rugged. So normally, in my typical installations, I'll connect it from the faucet there, and we'll drill a hole in the corner there, go around the, the counter and everything, but they have a dead, this is called a dead cabinet back in here, dead cabinet space. They're gonna tear out, we're going to remodel this whole kitchen in the near future anyway. So all we're gonna do is just run a little hole through the bottom of the, the, the cabinet there, and we're going to just run the line down here, then back behind the hose and have it pop out the other end there by the refrigerator, and that's all we're going to do. But normally we would be either running the hose through the cabinets by properly drilling holes to feed it all the way through, or if we were doing a complete tear out and we had all of these cabinets out and we took out the drywall like we normally do, we would be running a line inside the house. The line would pop out behind the refrigerator over here. And then when the line comes out over here in, the, in this area of the wall here, we normally prefer to install an outlet box into the drywall that the line connects to the back side of it. That way you have an outlet port on the wall here and you just run a five foot hose from the port to your ice maker line here on the back of your refrigerator, see? Very simple. In this case, we're not going to do that because we're going to be remodeling this whole kitchen soon and we're likely going to be doing that later on. Okay, so we're going to remove the water filter since they don't use it anymore. We're going to disconnect all of this and disconnect it off the valve so we can install our new ice maker line onto the bottom of that valve. This will look a lot cleaner too when we're done because we can eliminate this T now since we're not using it anymore. Okay. Okay. So there's the top part gone. Now let's loosen this opponent. Okay, there's that one gone. Now I'll just feed it back around and out of the way. Now I'm going to loosen this last one here. Okay, there we are. So now the tube, the old water filter tube, is now removed off of the valve there on the right hand side. Okay, so now the only thing left to do is to remove the other end of the copper tubing from the left side here, and then remove the other copper tubing on the right side of that filter there to get them out of the way and eliminate confusion later on. If anybody sees copper piping going anywhere and wondering, well, where does this go? What does this do? There we go. So now the left side tube is gone. Now we work on the right side. There we go. So that one is gone now. Okay, so we're going to use our whole dozer set here. And probably gonna go with this size here. What you wanna do is compare it to the end of the hose and see if the hose is gonna make it through okay. Okay, so you take it here and you screw it right in to there. Normally, to ensure a nice clean hole with no blowouts here, what I normally do here is I'll take my hole dozer here, right, and I'll score just a hole right here real quick, just a little on this side, 
enough for the drill to poke through. And then I'll go around the other side and do the same thing over there and score the hole. That way it's nice and clean and we don't get any blowouts. But there's no way to access the other side because that's the blind cabinet. So in this case, we're just going to plow right through it. So there we are. We are through. So you can see why I hate particle board. My house has the same garbage. All the builders give you this kind of stuff. Particle board has absolutely no business being placed in a kitchen or in a bathroom, really. And shame on builders and shame on the manufacturers for making garbage like this. Just shame on them. Okay, so now we just drilled the hole here in the left cabinet here and we'll feed the hose through there. And then down in that black hole you see in the corner there, that's where the old tube had popped out. So when the flooring people had come in and installed this flooring here later on, and they made this sharp point 45 degree miter cut here on the shoe rail there, that's what pinched and ruined the copper tubing there. So all somebody had to do was move it and it broke off right there. That was the shearing point. So there's where our new hose is coming out now. And it looks like we just barely had enough to barely make it. Okay, so here we are behind the fridge. The hose just barely reached the ice maker line from the back of the fridge here. So we're just going to give it a little uh, half a turn beyond hand tighten with our wrench and we'll be good to go. All right, so if you kind of recap what we did, we hooked up the ice maker line there, the steel belted hose, right up into the back there. And of course we didn't have enough slack. This was just a temporary hose that I brought over just to get them up and running until we can pull all this out to remodel. But it's going through the edge of that cabinet, through that base cabinet, through a hole in the back, behind the stove, through this other base cabinet here, where it pops out the sidewall of the base cabinet and goes right to the fridge. So this just barely made it. This is not an ideal situation, of course. This is just lipstick on a pig. But when we remodel the kitchen coming up soon, it will be much more professionally done. Well, anyway, I hope you're finding this video useful so far. And if you are, hey, do us a favor. Would you go ahead and smash that like button down below? Give us a thumbs up that lets us know that you like us. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, hey, make sure you click on that subscribe button down below because you don't want to miss out on all of the world-class videos we have here on remodeling your homes and your kitchens and your bathrooms and the flooring and the engineering disasters like what you saw here today and the tool reviews and the shop with me's through all of the big box stores. So make sure you click that subscribe button down below. And when you do that, make sure to click that gray bell icon next to it. That way you'll be alerted every time we upload a video or go live because otherwise YouTube won't alert you. So anyway, thank you so much for tuning in this week, folks, and we'll see you on the next one.